Hey everybody, welcome to part two on my video series about a basic Python project structure. If you watched my last video, then you saw how we set up a shopping cart application. We're gonna build that out a little bit further by writing some basic unit tests and installing this as a local package on our computer. By installing it locally, we'll be able to load this library anywhere we want on our local system and use it with other projects. The source code is in a shopping cart folder with an init file, a fruit folder, with our fruit domain information, the class for fruit, and then shopping cart, which has a mix of domain information, and then some functions, which are like services for our application. And then I have a readme file with some basic instructions, which I should probably update this section. And then I have my application. And this is the part that actually imports the code. You can see at the top how we're doing this, and then runs some functions. So let's start by writing our tests. I'm gonna hop back over here and I'm gonna create a new folder for tests. I'm gonna call it tests and we'll create that. All I wanna do is test my shopping cart. So I'm gonna say test shopping cart.py and I'll open that file up. I'm gonna use unit tests, which is standard with the Python libraries, import my library and the functions that I need for testing. Next, I'm gonna create my unit tests. So here's my first test. I'm just seeing if I can initialize a shopping cart. I wanna make sure that there's no items in that cart. This function tests that we can add a fruit to the cart and that it has the right properties once we add it. Okay, and this should be like this, and this should be one. All right, last test is to test that we can remove fruit from the cart. We're adding an apple, and then we're gonna make sure that that apple can be removed. Actually, this should be zero. We don't want any items. I guess we can make sure we've added it correctly. We add an apple to the cart, then we check that we're able to remove the apple, and then we check that if we try and remove another apple, uh, we make sure that we get none back as we expect. These are unit tests. So we're testing the shopping cart functions directly. When we remove a fruit from the cart, what happens is if it's not in there, we return none. In this case, there's nothing in the cart at this point in the test. So when I try and remove an apple, what we wanna see is that this removed fruit is equal to none. So the last thing I have to do in order to run my tests, unit test.main. There's a few problems with this file that I'm gonna just clean up. I didn't save this right. And down here, I need to import from my fruit, right? Okay, that brings me to the next point. These imports are not gonna work. That's because in here, we're in a directory where we don't have access to shopping cart directly. Let's look at my app here. I'm saying from shopping cart dot shopping cart. So this works because shopping cart is a folder that's in the same hierarchy as my app.py. For tests, this file is in a folder, so I don't have access to these. What I can do now is I could install this shopping cart as a local package on my computer. That'll give me access inside of this tests file. I'm gonna need a setup.py file. Call it setup.py, one level above our library. And I'm gonna add a really minimal setup, paste this in. Opening up my requirements file, reading and parsing those, and it's pretty standard actually to do it this way. I'm using these setup tools to just kind of throw together a quick like shopping cart app. Now, I have been messing around with this. So I actually have shopping cart version 1.0 installed. I'm gonna call this 1.1 and let's go ahead and install this thing. To do that, I make sure I'm in the right directory where I have my setup.py file here. Python dash M pip install dash E dot. Why am I even using Python dash M? Because 
you could just say pip install dash e like this. Your pip and your Python, they're separate executables on your system. And sometimes you pip install things that your Python doesn't know about. A really simple way of just avoiding that issue altogether is you say explicitly for this version of Python, I wanna pip install my thing. I'll go ahead and install that. And it's noticing that we have package.py and it's installing shopping cart dash 1.1. So I'm gonna go to my test folder and I'm gonna say unit test or Python dash M again, unit test. So the unit test associated with this version of Python and I wanna run my test. So I'm getting an error. My shopping cart got an unexpected argument. So this is a user error. This is not a test fail case. I've screwed something up. So when I initialized my shopping cart, it didn't want me to say no items because that's done under the hood, right? No, okay. Let's try it again. It's still failing because I screwed this up in every case. Let's see. Okay, so I gotta go back to this case. Go down, run this again. Failed, fruit is not defined. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, totally. I don't know where, why would, why would fruit be defined? It's an apple. It's obviously an apple. Um, great, okay. Apple, obviously. Failed because a fruit is not an apple. Okay, the last thing I think I screwed up was that assert is null is not a thing. I really think this time's gonna work. Ready? Three tests ran, great. So our unit tests are working, which means our local installation of the library was successful and we're, we're able to write and run our unit tests. So let's hop back to my readme and I'm gonna talk more about a command we used to install this locally, which was pip install dash e. But actually I talked about how it would be better to say python .m pip install e. So let's use that. Now, what is this doing? Well, what we're saying is install this library right here, which from setup.py, it understands that that's the shopping cart library. And then I'm saying dash E because we want this to be editable on our local environment. What this means is that when I make changes to the source code above, it'll be directly reflected on our local machine anywhere that we're importing and using the shopping cart library. Let me mess around a little bit more to show you how we can use this now. If I hop down back to my terminal, I'm gonna just go to my uh, home directory, Python here. I wanna see if I can import this from shopping, shopping cart. All right, that worked. Items, and uh, in our code, we, we just kind of initialize this to none. So I, I can do that. Fruit, import, I can do that. And I want an apple, obviously, and it'll have a price, $34, because this is the best apple in the world. So you can see how I'm using this library in a totally different part of my computer system. I'm in my home directory here, python.c, and I could go ahead and import, you know, shopping cart, let's say and it should let me do that. Just in case it's still not clear what installing our library locally does for us, let me show you one more example. I can take my app and put this anywhere on my machine and it'll still run. Let me show you how that works. I'm gonna copy my app to my downloads. Now if I go to my downloads folder, I'm gonna try and run this and everything's working normally. The last thing I'll show you is how we can use the init file, make our imports a little bit smoother. From the fruit, import fruit. Let's see how we can use that. If I go back down to my terminal and I'm gonna say python dash c from shopping cart dot fruit, and I'm gonna try and import fruit, cool. But now that I've added this to my init, what I can do is remove this part and I can just grab fruit directly from our library. Init can source up objects or functions from the files within the folder. How would I wanna use this? Well, what I really want is access to my shopping cart functions here. An easy way for me to fetch those is my app and I can grab them here and I'm gonna paste these in. And now I'm gonna say from dot shopping cart, if this is what my init file looked like, I would go back to my app and I wouldn't want these lines anymore. Both of these would be would be wrong now. I can remove this part and that part. That's it. So let's test this out. And in order to test this properly on our editable package, I'm gonna use the same trick. I'm gonna copy my app over to my downloads, uh, my app. All right, great. It looks like it's running. Look, I can sort of pass some of my favorite fruit, blueberries, obviously. And this works great. 
Cool. So that's it for this next video in building a basic Python project structure. Now, if you're enjoying these videos and getting value from them, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a like and consider subscribing. As a new channel, this can really help me get my videos seen. So in the next part, we're gonna build out this application a little bit further, and I'm gonna add some folders to our shopping cart library. In particular, I'm gonna add a domain folder, an adapters folder and a services folder and we're gonna sort of split up our code into those three bins and I'll talk about some of the philosophy behind why I'm doing that. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.